Hello everyone, welcome back to The Forge. Today I'm going to be showing you my method of truing up stock or otherwise turning down some material, especially if you do not have a lathe. Um, I use this method a lot whenever you know I've got a rivet that's just quite, just not quite the right size um, or a tenon drawn on something and it, you know, it just won't fit through the hole. Um, and uh, this method is pretty handy um, it's not going to be a real long video. Uh, of course, I say that on all my videos, but hey, you guys know how much I like to talk. Um, but I uh, hope you guys can glean some really good information here uh, and kind of get you thinking outside the box. Um, there's a few videos coming up and a few project builds that I'm going to be making. Uh, one of those is a homemade lathe uh, that will be in the future. Um, and, you know, if you're watching this video, that will be later on will be making up some plans for that. Uh, but, you know, I hope this video will get you guys thinking outside the box. Maybe there's some tools and stuff that is in your shop that you're not fully taking advantage of. So, hope you like the video and uh, get started. Thanks for watching. Alrighty, here we are. Um, in case you haven't noticed yet, this is a drill press. Uh, this is my shop drill press that I'm using. Um, you know, that, that's a uh, one of the lar it's the largest one that Harbor Freight makes. Uh, make sure I'm in focus there. Yep, there I am. Um, it's the largest one that Harbor Freight makes. As you guys can probably tell in a lot of my videos, I've got quite a few Harbor Freight tools. Um, I'm in the process of upgrading all my tools to, you know, all the real rich and fancy equipment. Um, but, you know, uh, Harbor Freight works in a pinch, you know, when you need a good throwaway tool or something that you know that's not going to last you a lifetime. Um, but it will inevitably help you uh, get to where you want to be. So I've had a lot of times where Harbor Freight's kind of come through when it was the difference between making money on a job and not making money on a job. Um, you know, even though it was a cheap tool and didn't last very long, it, it did the job what it needed to do. Um, I'll give a real quick safety concern. Any time that you're working with anything that is spinning um, or has rotation, uh, you want to be real cautious of where your hands are at all times, what you're using to touch the actual piece that's spinning. Uh, this is just general good practice. I don't care if you are using a lathe or using a drill press like we're about to do here. This is a method you can use. This is not a safe method. Let me be real clear about that. This is just a method that I have developed uh, just to help true some stuff up. So the piece that we got in here, as long as you know, let me go back. As long as you've got that on your brain and you've got the good safety concerns taken care of, we're all good to go. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a piece here. This is all rusty and scaly. Uh, not much good for uh, anything. I'm just using it as a piece, as an example. It's uh, just a scrap piece of 3 8 round stock. Um, you'll also notice that I got a really old and wore out square file. Um, I think you guys can kind of surmise already what I'm about to be doing. Um, but uh, hopefully this will help show you and illustrate how quickly this works. Um, you don't want to use a good file for this. You want to use a wore out file or next to wore out um, or a cheap Harbor Freight file, something you're not going to care about, you know, if you get used to it and des designate it for just this purpose. Um, this is to help illustrate what we're doing here. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on. Um, you don't need a real fast speed. So I'm going to, it's going to get loud here. I'm going to turn on the motor. Hopefully you guys can still hear me through the motor running. But right now, this is running at, I want to say I've got it set up for 350 RPMs. You can run at 5, 550 RPMs. Uh, I wouldn't suggest 3,000 RPMs or anything crazy like that. Um, anytime you're turning metal, you want a lower RPM anyhow. This way it gives it a chance to peel off the metal. But in this method, I'm going to reach behind here. Usually I just stand right in front and do this. I'll reach behind so you guys can see what's going on. We're going to just connect this to the piece and we're going to work it up and down. Remember, files only work on the push stroke. So you want it to be oriented like as if you were filing something. 
So as you can see, this is slowly but surely removing off a little material at a time. Um, you know, a drill press is not a lathe, so you can't expect to get real accurate with this. This is just a real quick and nice and easy way of creating a surface here that is kind of milled down. Um, you know, and if you're going for a specific size, you can check that now with some calipers. But as you can see, in a pretty short order, it took, it took off all that mill scale um, and rust. Um, the next step that I do, usually, you can see some lines in here, hopefully. Let me come around here, talk a little softer. Let's see here. Yeah, you can see that pretty good. Um, there's some lines there. We're going to end up taking care of those. And how we're going to do that is, is I got a piece of 240 grit sandpaper. Uh, you've seen me use this in other videos. And all I'm going to do is double this sandpaper in half to give it, give it a little more thickness. And I'm going to wrap it around this material. I'm not trying to wrap it all the way. I'm just trying to take, you know, I'm not trying to wrap this all the way around the chip, the bit. I'm just trying to press it against the surface. But we'll, we'll sand this and hopefully you guys will see how smooth that gets. Um, and I'll go over to the workbench and show you uh, after it's said and done. I noticed the video is a little dark. Um, I'll show you after it's said and done the final result, you know, the beginning to the end here. Um, but as you can see, you can use, I mean, that's coming out with a pretty nice result for something that's not, uh, you know, $7,000 for a metal lathe or whatever. Um, you know, and that works pretty well for fine, small pieces. Uh, I think I spent a little over 300 bucks on this uh, drill press. Of course, they got cheaper, smaller drill presses there. I'm not sponsored by Harbor Freight. I'm just a cheapo like everybody else, and I try to get by on what I can. Um, so I'm not a sponsor for Harbor Freight, uh, but you know, I do use their tools. Um, you know, any drill press, obviously, that has some variable speed options to it will work. So I'm probably making a lot of people nervous right now, you know. What if you get your fingers caught in there? Roy, I thought you said you were a safety Nazi. Or, you know, a safety nut. Well, I'm just going to say, you know, do as I say, not as I do. That's a good fatherly statement to make. So, anyways, as you can see, that's got that cleaned up pretty well. Um, we'll turn this down. I'll slow it down here, and you can see that final result there. I'll bring it over here to the workbench on the table and uh, show you guys the result in this next clip. All right, here we are. As you can say, as you can see, pretty big difference. I know it was a little hard to see on the drill press video there. Uh, as you can see, that surface is perfectly clean, and that's how it started. Um, uh, not bad for a wore out file and about 20 cents in sandpaper and one kind of expensive, moderately expensive drill press. Um, anyways, hope this kind of gets you guys to start thinking outside the box, um, um, you know, on tooling, some things that you guys got in your shop right now that can be handy to you, uh, that, you know, you can start, uh, turning those I can'ts into I can's. Uh, I remember uh, in the earlier days when I first got started blacksmithing, tooling was really, um, it just seems like everybody's tooling was always, you know, just a few hundred dollars more than what I had uh, to give for it. Um, and that was real frustrating getting started. So, you know, I have had to fight and scrap and, uh, you know, for every tool that I have now, uh, of course, you know, I've got expensive plasma cutters and welders and whatnots you know this isn't a brag on me this is a brag on God for blessing my business uh, and my family so much that uh, uh, I can do this and, and you know I can have the time to do YouTube and things um, but uh, that's kind of why I have this channel the way it is uh, I'm trying to take and sew into the guys that are just getting started um, 
you know, trying to get your first tooling, you know, get your first tools, start thinking outside the box as far as, you know, what you can do with what you have. Um, it doesn't always have to be the nicest tool, as long as it gets you by and allows you to take that next step. So, anyways, enough of this for me today. Um, I appreciate everyone who watched the video this far. Uh, thank you for all your kind comments and your support uh, of this channel. Um, through everyone who's bought in Power Hammer plans or uh, any plans online. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, that allows these videos to continue on and hopefully get better and better as we go. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I just greatly appreciate that. Can't say enough. Uh, God bless you all out there. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, and we'll catch you next time. Happy smithing.